I wish, I wish with all my heart to fly with dragons in the land of heart. The Dragon Prince is back, y'all. So that means it's time for my spoiler for review here on Comic Universe. What up guys and welcome to the web first must see comic and culture show. Welcome to the comic universe. I'm Dr. J. I got a PhD in nerd culture and I should know. I printed it out myself. Now it is time to review the Dragon Prince Season 2. Uh, in case you guys don't know what that is, it is the high fantasy Netflix original animated series created by one of the head writers and executive producers of Avatar The Last Airbender, Aaron Ahaz. And I apologize if I mispronounced your name, sir. You did a great job. Uh, we did not actually cover the first season when it came out, but two out of three of us really liked it. Um, just kind of give a quick breakdown of the range of opinions on the Dragon Prince, at least across the Comic Universe team. C-Dubs absolutely loves it. He goes as far to say as he likes it better than Avatar The Last Airbender. I would not go that far. I'm in the middle where I really like it, but I'm also a big fantasy nerd. I play a lot of D&D, that kind of stuff, but I still think Last Airbender is better. Now, DPZ doesn't like it, but DPZ also says that other than Lord of the Rings, he has a hard time getting into high fantasy in general. So, I mean, it's not for everybody. So, that's basically our general opinions on Dragon Prince Season 1 when it first came out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it more in detail. This is obviously a spoiler-free review of Season 2, but if you haven't seen Season 1, it's been a year, so I feel like I'm comfortable enough to get into spoilers uh, when it comes to Season 1. So Season 1 of The Dragon Prince, it sets up our basic premise. We have this world with six different types of magic, and basically it's divided into two sides. There's Zadia, which is where all the magical creatures live, and then there's the human portion. Um, and so the humans and the dragons have been at war with each other for centuries, and eventually the king of the nation of Catalis manages to slay the dragon king, the storm dragon, and he is able to kind of put his kingdom at peace, but at the cost of being a constant target by Zadian forces. And also, the Dragon Prince Egg disappears. And so, there's that whole mystery, and a lot of the Zadians feel ashamed, and they're scared, and they don't really have hope that their world can be saved from the wrath of the humans and their dark magic without the Dragon Prince. I know, we're getting a lot of Avatar vibes, but it's different than that. So, our main characters are Callum and Ezrin. They're both princes. Callum, he is the older one. He's trained to do, like, the traditional sword fighting, battle tactics, and stuff like that, but he's not good at that stuff. What he's good at is art and drawing. He eventually figures out he has a talent for magic. Ezrin is our Aang-like character, childish, happy-go-lucky little kid. And he has this deep connection with animals. Eventually, uh, they end up being set upon by moon shadow elves, where they end up meeting an elf named Rayla. Now, initially, Callum and Ezrin are very hesitant about elves because they were raised their entire lives to think elves are evil and Rayla was raised her entire life thinking humans are evil and then when they discover that the dragon prince's egg is being hidden away by the royal vizier they take the dragon prince egg and they all decide in order to kind of bridge the gap between the Zadians and the humans they are to deliver the dragon prince egg to Zadia to the dragon queen now along the way, they're being chased by dark forces, including the Royal Vizier's 
son and daughter who are good friends of the princes. In particular, uh, the royal vizier's daughter Claudia is someone that Callum has a crush on. She herself is a sorcerer as well. So that's interesting. And basically, at the end of the first season, the dragon prince's egg actually hatches. And we have ourselves an adorable little baby dragon. Who they name Zim, which is cool. So, now season 2 picks up. And we're basically traveling to Zadia. Still trying to get Zim to Zadia to his mother safely. Season 2 really picks up. Um, the animation is a lot better uh, in Season 2 than it was in Season 1. In Season 1, the action sequences were great, but the scenes where they were kind of just talking and not doing much action-wise, uh, it seemed kind of stiff and a little robotic, and you could kind of see, like, frame glitches in a couple scenes if you're actually paying attention. But less of those here, uh, which means I guess they got more of a budget, or they just had more time, which, good for them. But the action scenes are still really great. Absolutely love them. Uh, we get more exploration into the magic system, which I really was looking forward to. That was something that I was hoping for. And also, we kind of learn the backstory of our villain, who is the royal advisor. We find out where he's getting some help from, and some future antagonists, as well as figuring out kind of a, a power quest for Callum. And then Ezrin has his own kind of call to action and rise to a call of duty, so to speak, um, when he has to fulfill a certain role once things are revealed to him. Again, I'm keeping it spoiler-free because this is the spoiler-free review. Um, overall, though, I really enjoyed this season. Um, the writing is really strong. The character dynamics, super solid, as always, and as to be expected from Aaron Haas. Now, granted, one or two of the characters, in particularly on the antagonist side, are a bit mustache twirly and one-dimensional, as of right now. Granted, more layers could be shown later, but as of right now, they seem a little bit mustache twirly. That's my one kind of complaint. Now, they did explain some hanging threads that I complained about in the first season that didn't really make any sense, um, but they made sure to explain them right away at the start of the second season, so that problem was pretty much solved instantly once the season started, which is cool. Again, the exploration of the magic system is dope, and we got to explore the world even more and learn more backstory on Callum and Ezra's parents, in particular their mother, who we knew wasn't in the picture, but we didn't know the story behind that. And again, it gives such a deeper character arc to Ezra and Callum, and it also helps us draw some connections between other characters that are on the more antagonistic side. We also get more development from Rayla, learning to bond and trust Ezrin and Callum, and you really, really see their friendship blossom in this season, which is great. Um, they have such a fun, realistic, genuine friendship, and I love it. Voice acting is top-notch. Of course, veterans that we've heard throughout the Avatar series and all throughout animation in general. And a few pretty big names, too. Voice acting is pretty top-notch. Like I said, action sequences on point. Loved all the magic stuff. And character development. That's what I wanted more of. There were some seeds planted in the first season, but we didn't really get to see more than small glimpses, but we actually get some solid payoff here. I had a feeling they were going to take the gardener approach to storytelling, as Avatar did. But the only thing I will say, and I said it last season as well, my issue is that these are only nine 30-minute episodes, and because of that short season length, 
it kind of means that pacing is sped up. I mean, I like the fast pace and all. Um, it definitely makes for a much more brisk storytelling. It's not like Avatar where we spend a couple episodes in a remote village and only move a little bit further. Which I like that in terms of like being able to move the plot forward. But at the same time, like the strongest part of Avatar were those small moments where we got to know our characters. Granted, we still get to know our characters uh, within their journey to Zadia. But still, I would like more of those moments. And again, I'm not trying to fully compare it to Avatar The Last Airbender. The Dragon Prince should stand on its own as its own thing. But, you know, as it's created by somebody who was heavily involved in Last Airbender, um, comparison is inevitable, right? So, had to do it at some point. But overall, I really, really enjoyed the first season of Dragon Prince. And the second season was even better and it delivered on some major payoff that I was looking for in Season 2. If you want to hear a full, detailed spoiler review, you can check out the review over on my channel, Mr. J's Reviews. I will leave that linked in the outro card. Don't forget to Hulk smash that like button like you mean it. And big thank you to everybody that's been supporting the channel. We have officially reached our goal to hit over 1K. We are over 1,000! Thank you. You, universe, you are amazing, we love you, we appreciate you, and I say again, and I can't say this enough, we thank you. Uh, like I said, in the outro card I will leave linked my spoiler review of the Dragon Prince Season 2 if you want to hear full spoilery details where I go into more character analysis and stuff like that. And I will leave a video linked in the outro card that YouTube's mysterious algorithm thinks you might like. And I hope you do, but until next time guys. This is Jay from Mr. Reviews for the comic universe, and hopefully I'll see you guys next time in the universe. Peace.